Very, very quickly now, Gil, can you say that the, with the balance of power existing now in our region, would you say that the U.S. has been supplanted by China as being the, uh, let's say, the balancing power in our region? Not entirely, because the, there are four sources of power in world politics or geopolitics. And one is the capacity to multiply your wealth or the amount of wealth that you hold. Mm -hmm. The United States is the leader of the world economies. It's the greatest world economy. And it's, in fact, the head of the what you call group of seven or group of eight. Number two is when you have the military power or the ability to inflict nuclear power, that's the reason that the United States has all that power. The third one is technology. If you have technology, if your government, and this I ask our Philippine government to do, if your government ports your Filipino inventors, then we can get our appropriate technology and we don't have to buy inventions and pay royalties from the foreigners. Therefore, we can produce more for less and faster time. And the fourth, fourth uh, mm -hmm. source of power is information. Mm -hmm. It's the head, what you've got between your ears. If you don't have anything between your ears, boy, you're dead meat. All right. Any way you look at it. And we will try to give our audience more information to put in between their ears. When we continue with this discussion in a moment, our topic, geopolitics, you are engaged in public policy forum at the ANC and International Academy of Management and Economics special. Welcome back to Public Policy Forum. We're still talking to Vox Populi Philippines Chair, Hill H.A. Santos. Let's talk about the trilateral centers of the world. Okay. That's the three centers of economic power mm -hmm. at present. The United States, European Union, and East Asia composed of Japan, China, Korea, Taiwan, and Hong Kong. Uh, are they in conflict or are they conducting harmonious relations? Even, Loli, Noli, even if they are in the best of friendships, you cannot help but get competition among nations. Because in this modern age, people are very friendly to each other. However, they produce competitive products. For example, the same amount of agricultural products we produce here is produced in China. Mm. The same amount of uh, cars and other industrialized, highly industrialized products produced in Europe are also produced in uh, the United States and in Japan. However, you cannot help it but get different stages, different degrees of sophistication or advancements in the trade industry, labor, uh, education of people, investments in, in, uh, in human resource, and all that stuff. You cannot help that. So, I, what I'm saying, Noli, is simple. If you have direct competitions among friends, then somehow, because of national interests, remember, national interests are permanent. National interests are permanent, and therefore, every country, every government is looking out for its own national interest and must protect its own citizens. I'm looking at the context mm -hmm. of the World Trade Organization that is globalization, and yet there is protectionism in these three centers of the world. Precisely, precisely, uh, Noli. For example, Japan produces rice. The rice farmer in Japan can change the entire membership in the diet if they <laughs> want to. Mm -hmm. Yes, because they are subsidized by the government mm. because their votes, the votes of the farmer in Japan is very, very powerful and very, very sophisticated. Now, compared to the technologies, the wealth, the subsidies that the Japanese government gives its farmers, the Philippines is no comparison. It's no competition. We, we fold. We fold. We'll have to pray and kneel, <laughs> kneel and pray for assistance, you know. Mm. In that respect, in that respect, the Americans come in and give us agricultural aid. They still give us agricultural aid. For example, if we need any assistance for the, for the, for the rice production, they would still be ready. We still have the public PL 480, which is an agreement between the Philippines and the United States. 
which is limited to assistance, financial assistance to our agricultural products. Mm -hmm. You know. So in the food uh, sector, as a factor, as a geopolitical factor, there is still protectionism. Now let's talk to another center outside, uh -huh. the trilateral centers, yes. the OPEC energy, which is a big factor the OPEC. in geopolitics, yes. and it's affecting all our people. If you, can rem if you will remember, both of you, World War II was uh, intensified, or uh, it was launched, in, uh, intensified in Southeast Asia, because the Japanese were prevented from getting oil from Indonesia. By whom? By the Americans. They controlled the big six the big six of the petroleum uh, companies at that time, you see. So what happened? Japan could not manufacture its goods. Japan doesn't have the natural resources that mm -hmm. the Philippines has. On the other hand, with Japan's money, they could flood us with a lot of other imports from third world countries competing against us, competing against ours. Therefore, all those financial assistance the Japanese have could be channeled into A, getting concessional rates from other sources of oil. Now, in relation in, or in retaliation, the ASEAN countries, remember there are 10 ASEAN nations and we are one of them. In fact, the Philippine foreign policy hinges on the ASEAN relationship. It's mm. an economic block. Therefore, what the ASEAN nations have done is they have an agreement which is called the Strategic Commodities Agreement, which provides that if at any one single time our inventory of oil, for example, gets below the two months or the 60-day level, Indonesia, Brunei, and Malaysia, which are the net exporters of oil in the region, will give us oil at friendship price. ASEAN price. So ASEAN. that kind of arrangement actually is advantageous to us yes. in terms of the geopolitical relationship right. among ASEAN countries. That's right. And in, ter of, in terms of food, of rice, if any of the ASEAN nations' mm -hmm. uh, inventory goes below the two-month level, they will also get from Vietnam, which produces a lot of rice, from Thailand, which is just about the biggest exporter of rice, and even Indonesia, and in the Philippines if we have any extra. And the other trilateral uh, part of the equation, Nolly? Well, uh, he mentioned it already. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to go to the two other factors mm -hmm. of geopolitics, go ahead. terrorism and national security. How does geopolitics uh, apply to these two factors? I, I, could not, I could not give you a much better example. In fact, the best example would be the last uh, this last episodes on the Afghanistan, the Iraqi, uh, Iraqi war, you see. Why did the Philippines send expeditionary forces to Korea in the 1950s, or to Vietnam, mm -hmm. or to Iraq? Why? Because we are friendly to the United States, and the U.S. asked us to help. And that is because if there is some kind of a, an international sanction, against the aggressors in those three cases, and we are with the friendly allies, then we have our own advantage in our consolidation of friendship, because that friendship can translate easily into other benefits, like trade and investment. Trade and investments. You know, if, you are, if you are friendly to the Americans or to the Europeans, certainly you can attract their, their uh, investments here.